On a Thursday morning, halfway through her breakfast of yogurt and blueberries, Celia Graham received an email. It went something like this. Dear Miss Celia Graham, we are writing to offer you a job with our theatre company, Wordplay, based on the recommendation of Stephen Rose. This job is that of assistant to the lead in our newest play, Something Forgotten. If you would like this job, please phone the number included below within 24 hours. I apologize for the haste, but we leave for Monte Carlo, our opening location, on Saturday morning. Yours sincerely, Rafe Visner, manager. Celia polished off her breakfast and picked up her phone, first dialing the corner store where she was currently working. Hello, yes, Tariq? Great. Hi, this is Celia. No, I can't come. That's what I'm... Yes, I'm sorry that that Greg is on vacation, but there's nothing I can do. No, that's why I'm calling. I'm handing in my resignation, effective immediately. Why? Because I'm going to France. Saturday morning found Celia at the airport, a rucksack over her shoulder, smiling. She wore a grey beanie cap over her bob-cut straight, sleek brown hair, a tight pair of black jeans, and a black and white striped shirt that was two sizes too big. She looked every inch the up-and-coming youth with more hope than reason, but she was perhaps the exception, to have reason and hope and enjoy what she did. For the most part, it was enough. Celia Graham, the newcomer, was an artist-type man, too old for acting and too young for retirement. He had a belly that didn't quite fit his image, and the longer hair and beard of someone who watched and paid attention to the most modern styles. Based on the tailored sports jacket and the leather briefcase he carried, she assumed he was the manager, Rafe Visner. That's me, she said, shaking his outstretched hand. He let his shoulders sag in relief. Oh, thank goodness. I heard that traffic was really bad getting to the airport, and I was worried that you wouldn't make it on time, he said. Oh, uh, right. I'm Rafe, the manager. Um, if you'll follow me, we'll get you through security and passport control, and we can get you introduced at the terminal. Rightio, Celia said cheerfully. Rafe gave her a wan smile at her attitude and led the way through security. He seemed astonished that Celia had only the one bag, but you never knew with youth these days. The more odd part was that security or passport control and the woman behind the coffee counter where she purchased a cup of hot chocolate seemed completely charmed by this cheerful, willing woman. She smiled and petted and actually listened to them. If she could manage Bobby Thurston as well as the coffee girl, things would be just fine. But Barbara Joan Thurston, while one of the best actresses out there, was far from a treasure of a person. Okay, Rafe said as they walked up to the gate. There were five or six people lazing around that looked as though they belonged to one group. That was where he headed, and those people immediately seemed to fizzle up, with varying degrees of attention. Attention, people, Rafe said, projecting his voice as actors are trained. Rafe, there you are, a man with 1930s style hair and a three-piece suit called. Celia couldn't tell if it was a costume or just a stylistic choice. It could have been both. Bobby was thinking that you would miss boarding call. And what a shame that would be, too, an older woman with grace and regality in her face and figure purred. She held out a hand as Rafe drew closer and let him kiss it. Alice, you never cease to amaze me. Rafe sat beside the woman and grinned at her. Your words cut as sharp as any knife. Are you even going to introduce us to your friend? The owner of this sharp voice was a woman of about thirty with the look of absolute beauty. Her skin held just enough of the golden tint to be luxurious. Her hair was sleek and curled in a shade of dark chocolate that many coveted. Her clothes were in the height of style and cut to show off the fact that she was supremely proportioned, and her eyes were a deep brown that could melt hearts if she chose. At the moment, she did not choose. She stared at Celia with only the vaguest bit of interest. She'll be most interesting to you, Bobby dearest, Rafe said, placing just the tiniest bite on the word dearest. She's your assistant, Bobby. Bobby Thurston meets Celia Graham. Hi, Celia said, waving her hand. Bobby straightened and looked over at Celia with a penetrating gaze. Celia hardly blinked, just trying to look friendly and unassuming. She had been in the business since dropping out of university to work in the world of theatre and knew that actresses, especially leads, like to have everyone else just a tiny bit inferior, so she would be inferior. Nice to meet you. Celia, Alice said with one perfectly sculpted eyebrow raised. That's a funny coincidence. The main character in the play is named Celia. Oh, well, that's confusing, Celia said, red warning lights going off in the back of her head as she saw Bobby's eyes narrow ever so slightly at Alice. How about everyone just calls me Graham? That way we won't have to get things all mixed up. Works for me, the man who had thus far been silent said. He was about Alice's age and was just as handsome, Celia imagined, as the day he had opened his career, if slightly more mature. His slate grey hair was swept back and he he might have been wearing khakis and a button-up shirt, but he could have been wearing a tux for all the difference it made. He was charm and style, and judging by the way everyone subconsciously relaxed, he knew it. So, Graham, Bobby said, patting the seat beside her, you work as an assistant? 
thanks, Celia said, taking the seat and knowing perfectly well that Bobby was trying to make her out and put her into place. Sort of. I started off as an assistant to the stage manager in the production of Phantom, toured all over the U United States. Then when I got back to the UK, I decided I would do something else. So I jumped ship to working in plays, props master in a little production in the backwoods of London, assistant to the props master in a slightly larger production, assistant to the lead in A Christmas Carol, that one that had been rewritten to include technology in modern times. Very interesting. Between jobs, I pick up work wherever I can get it. Last time was at the corner store down the, from my flat, but I've been waitress at restaurants, retail associate at various stores, even researcher at a library. If something is interesting, I'll try it for a while, but I always end up back in theater. You're a floater, Rafe said. Celia gave a half shrug and was glad that the conversation was cut short when the call to board came. They got on the plane and had barely settled into their seats when Bobby started outlining her schedule, which Celia put into her phone. As long as I'm not up before seven, your head can stay on its shoulders, Bobby said. It was likely meant to be a joke, but Celia only managed to chuckle. I'll expect you to manage everything that involves the theater, so that means rehearsal schedule, call times, etc. Personal things you leave alone unless they conflict with the job. You'll be dealing with all of my costumes and makeup and everything else, so it had better be in order. And if I need someone to run lines, I'm it, Celia said. I'll get a copy of the script from Rafe. Good, Bobby said. Anything else? Celia was still keying the details into her phone, but Bobby had already leaned back into her chair and closed her eyes. If there is, you take care of it, Bobby said. Celia nodded, then realized Bobby Thurston couldn't see her. You've got it, Celia said with a smile. As always, things would be interesting. Then the plane took off and they were on their way. Celia smiled, always glad to have another adventure. The hop from London to Monte Carlo was little more than an hour. The arrival was everything Celia hoped it would be. There were people swarming around taking pictures, honeymooners exchanging gooey eyes with each other and businessmen. Sure, there was money, but there was also life. Celia didn't mind when Bobby left her to carry the three bags and drag them along behind her. She loaded them into the taxi with Rafe and let him tell the driver where the hotel was, or motel, or bed and breakfast. She didn't really care. Now, normally we house the assistants in a motel, letting the actors have the nicer accommodations, but as you are our only assistant, the others have to make do with junior staff, and uh, Bobby Thurston is, well, Bobby Thurston. We've got you in the same hotel, Rafe explained. I'm the only assistant, Celia asked, listening fully to the manager, though her attention was completely taken up by the scenery outside the window. Yes, it's a fairly small production, and, well, Stephen Rose said that you were good, really good, so I figured that you could make do? It was a question, a hopeful one. She would officially be Bobby's assistant, but if there were errands to run or things to do, Rafe was hoping he could count on her. Celia nodded. Shouldn't be a problem, she said. Then the hotel came into view. Oh, oh wow, look at that. It's like a palace. It's just a hotel. Rafe handed over the euros to pay the driver, and Celia clambered out of the car, craning her head to look all the way up. It was stone and brick with tasteful landscaping and the old city charm that she had hoped for with France. But it's a pretty one, and so tall, Celia said. She jerked her attention away the mo a moment later and helped the driver unload the luggage. After that, the other cabs showed up, dispensing the actors with varying degrees of frustration with travel and pleasure at being where they were. Celia immediately picked up her and Bobby's bags and followed the troop inside, where she continued gaping, grinning widely. Rafe checked them in and Celia deposited Bobby into her suite, promising to be back in a few minutes once she had dropped her off her own bag and freshened up. She took exactly that amount of time to admire her room. She had toured all over with Phantom and seen various other hotels with the other productions she had been involved with, but there was something about being in another country that made everything more interesting than novel. The carpet was plush and a deep burgundy. The bed was made with a golden cream duvet and pristine white sheets that were expertly tucked underneath, the pillows plush. The furniture was made of cream-painted wood and the bathroom was big enough for a full bathtub and shower. It was exotic and homely and would be her home for the next while. Celia took one quick glance at herself in the mirror and straightened her hat before running down the hall to Bobby's room, where she met with chaos. There were bags strewn open and clothes everywhere. The actress greeted her assistant with a bared teeth smile. There you are, Graham, she said. Help me get everything sorted. I simply cannot find the green midi dress I bought and the black sheer scarf. I want to wear that when the company goes out tonight. I have the scarf, but I can't find the dress. I'll find it, Celia promised. Bobby nodded gruffly and closed the door behind Celia with a grumble. Mentally, the cheerful assistant rolled up her sleeves and set to work. All adventures had their downsides, she supposed. Maybe Bobby Thurston would just take a while to get used to things. Celia rather imagined that Bobby would be her downside, though. Oh well, it was better than the corner store.